I'm assuming most of the choir must be sitting on this side when they get done. Because <laughs> this side looking pretty full, that side looking a little bit empty, all right? So, but we're sure glad you guys are here today. Uh, no first-time visitors, but uh, the Maxwells do have family visiting with them, so it's good to have them here visiting with us. From the great state of Michigan, of course, okay? So we are definitely more glad to have you guys here than, than the Indiana folks, okay? So appreciate that. Maybe you can bring some more with you next time when you come. We got a, got a lot of work to do to change the Indiana folks, all right? But we're, we're working on it. Now, they gripe and complain, but their last pastor was from Michigan, and I'm from Michigan, so they must love Michigan. They just don't know it. So we're working on that, but uh, we're sure glad you guys are visiting here today. I don't think I, there's anybody else that I know of, uh, but we're sure glad our regular folks are here. What a great day for January, is it not? I mean, what great weather can we have, and what better place to be than be in God's house? Why don't we go ahead and stand as Brother Don comes and leads us this morning in Christ alone. this drought and storm what heights of love what depths of peace when fears assailed when striving cease my comforter my all in all here in the love of christ i stand in christ alone who took on flesh Fullness of God in helpless babe, the gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Built on the cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin on him was laid. Here in the death of Christ I live. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man, can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I stand. Amen. Let's bow for opening prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this day and just this day that you have given us, Lord, to come together as a body, Lord, to worship you, to fellowship, and to hear from your word. We pray you be with everything, we pray that it just brings you honor and glory. Lord, we just are so thankful that it's through Christ alone that we can have a relationship with you. And Lord, I pray you be with Pastor as he preaches your word. I pray you just fill him with the Holy Spirit, Lord, and we might be made closer to the image of your Son. If someone here is not saved, I pray that today will be the day of their salvation. Lord, we uh, pray for some of the folks who can't be here. We specifically want to lift up the kidneys, Lord, just with their health problems, Lord, we pray that your hand of comfort and your hand of healing will be upon them. They can get back to worshiping together with us. And Lord, we thank you for everything you've done, and we thank you for that which you continue to do. We pray for these things in your son's name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
Stand, would you join me in standing once again as we sing our second song this morning? I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. Sweet. 
and let him lead than to be the king of a vast domain and be held in sin's dread sway. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world. seated so just <clears throat> excuse me so just a couple quick announcements um coming up on january 24th is our next teen bible study that's from 6 to 7 p.m and if your teenager is not part of uh bible study yet but would like to be just have them come they don't need any books we're going right through uh different portions of the bible we would love to have them um also february 9th through 11th is Snow camp. If you're wanting to send your teens and have not gotten me any paperwork, please um, give me the paperwork today just so I can make sure I can get that to uh, Camp Kobiak. And also, parents, uh, reminder, I need the money before we leave on February 9th. And also, on March the 4th is our next blast rally that will be up in La Porte. Uh, we'll probably be leaving at 10 a.m., but um, once we get closer, I'll finalize the time. So those are my announcements. I'll give it back to Pastor. All right, just a reminder of some things coming up again for those who are in the Faith Bible Institute. That starts tomorrow night, 6 o'clock, 6 to 9. Again, if you'd like to come and visit a class, you can do that to see if you might be interested in enrolling. You could probably still get it done this spring. Yes, okay, we can still do that. But if nothing else, you might want to see what's in store for maybe the fall if you're interested in doing that. It's a three-year program. It takes you through the entire Bible, and Pastor Ace does a great job of keeping your interest. You will not be disappointed. Um, things coming up again the rest of this week, the tomorrow again, or excuse me, tomorrow, Tuesday, uh, men's meet at Burger King if you would like some time for fellowship. You don't have to work or whatever. We're usually there from 8 o'clock until uh, they kick us out, okay? So it's usually a long day there, but uh, with men just love to fellowship there. Uh, they're almost as bad as the ladies. The ladies, though, they fellowship for a while on Wednesdays at 1 o'clock with coffee, and then they go shopping at Bailey's. I don't know about that part of it, so maybe we should stick them at Burger King and we should go to Bailey's or something. I'm not sure about that. Uh, Wednesday night is a uh, regular schedule, getting prayer meeting, Bible study, kids club, uh, teens, don't forget about it again, that we have a young ladies and a young men's class, a young ladies class 18 to 35, the men's same 8 to 35, they are separate classes. Uh, if you're walking down toward a teen room, the ladies meet on the right and the men meet on the left. So if you're interested in that, if you have some friends that uh, you know, might be struggling with certain things, it's a little bit more uh, informal, but a little bit more discussion and aspect. I think people enjoy that. Uh, so if you're interested in that, uh, we'd love to have them visit. That's 6 o'clock on Wednesday night. Uh, January 28th, those 55 and over will be having dinner at a Total Cafe at 2 o'clock. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I saw a sign-up sheet back there, but there should be a sign-up sheet back there so we can know about how many people are going. So if, if we don't have that, uh, we'll get that out there for you guys. Uh, March 6th through the 14th, again, if you're interested in a mission trip, that is not through our church. Uh, and it's not too late, but you're probably getting pretty close there. If you want to, are interested in that, let me know. Uh, it is something, though, we've had a couple of people that are interested perhaps because of the short notice. So maybe that's something we can plan for next year. If men are as a work trip on the mission field in Nicaragua. Uh, so if you're interested in that, let me know and we'll see about uh, scheduling some things with the other church and be able to do that next year. March 10th and 11th is Couples Retreat. There's a sign-up sheet there at the Welcome Center. I don't think I put it on there, but the cost is going to be about $165 is what it'll be for a couple for the weekend. That does include your dinner on Friday night and your drinks and your tip. All that's included in that price along with the hotel room and stuff. Uh, so that is, again, January, March 10th and 11th. You do need to sign up pretty quick because we only have 35 rooms. That's it. And uh, we are going with Friendship Baptist Church, so it needs to be, you need to sign up if you're thinking about going at all. And then uh, you'll have to have the money in probably two weeks before uh, we go uh, for that, okay? If you have any questions, let us know. But uh, again, our guest speaker will be Mike Maynard. Uh, he's been here before. Most of you know who, Brother Mike. Uh, so he'll be our guest speaker for the couple's retreat. And then also don't forget about the Ladies Bible Study January through March. On Tuesdays at 2 o'clock, uh, you can meet in person at Miss Deb Burns, or you can do it virtual. But if you have any questions, let her know and she'll be glad to answer them for you. Yes. Uh, this Bible oh. From noon until 2? Okay, ladies Bible study here at the church from noon until 2 this Thursday, okay, this Thursday. Uh, so please take note of that, okay? All right, if the ushers come, we'll go ahead and take up the morning offering. We had a great time yesterday, the men that went. Uh, 
It's one of those things where you wish you could turn back time so everybody would, would uh, take advantage of that. I know I gave you some bad information and I apologize for that. I thought it was an all day event, but it's just a, I think uh, the last session started at noon our time. So I think that we were probably able to leave 1.30, 2 o'clock our time and be back at a reasonable time. It is early morning, I won't lie about that part. It is early, but uh, it was a great, great conference. You can ask any of the men that went. It's one of those things that uh, you, you wish that even the ladies could have came. It was that good. Uh, Brother Pastor Wilkerson did a, a wonderful job uh, preaching. I'll mention a little bit more about that in the morning service. But that is scheduled uh, the second Saturday uh, every year in January. So we'll kind of put that on our calendar. So if you want to make plans even now for that to, uh, to be able to go, that we'll plan on doing that. It was a great time. I think the men really enjoyed it. Okay? I'm going to ask your Brother Gene if he'd pray for the offering, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day that you've given us, Lord, for the sunshine and uh, the warmer weather, Lord, in this uh, time that's usually very freezing out and cold and wintry. Lord, we just thank you for that, that uh, we have a good day today. And we ask, Lord, that if there's someone here this morning that is not saved, Lord, that today would be the day of salvation for them. We thank you for everyone that has come out today. We ask that you'll bless the gift and the giver. Use these tithes and offerings for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 doxology that first part of that praise him from all for, praise him for all from whom all blessings fall I'm going to say that right eventually you know one of the things we learned about when we were down in that class was to praise God for your problems a way to get through your problems and a way to deal with your problems is the first thing to praise him when we praise him it puts him in perspective and uh, what a great song that is thank you Miss Gabby there she is she went down there all right our next song God leads us along Ha! 
pasture so rich and so sweet, God leads his dear children along. Where the water's cool flow bays the weary one's feet, God leads his dear children along. Some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives a song in the night season and all the day long. Sometimes on the mount where the sun shines so bright, God leads his dear children along. Sometimes in the valley, in darkest of night, God leads his dear children along. Some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives a song in the night season and all the day long. Through sorrows befall us and Satan oppose, God leads his dear children along. Through grace we can conquer defeat. All our foes, God leads his dear children along. Some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives a song. Amen. If you're able to stand, would you join me as we sing our final congregational song this morning? All the way my Savior leads me. All the way my Savior leads me. What have I to ask beside? Can I doubt his tender mercy? Who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divinest comfort, hear my faith in him to dwell. For I know whatever befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. For I know whatever befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. All the way my Savior leads me, Cheers each winding path I tread. May grace for every trial feeds me with the living bread. Though my weary steps may falter and my soul a thirst may be, gushing from the rock before me, a joy of joy I see. Gushing from the rock before me, lo, a spring of joy I see. All the way my Savior leads me, oh, the fullness of his love. Perfect rest to me is promised in my Father's house above. When my spirit clothed in mortal, to realms of day, this my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. This my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. Amen. You may be seated. I 
I come to the cross seeking mercy and grace. I come to the cross where you died in my place. Out of my weakness and into your strength, humbly I come to the cross. Your arms are open, you call me by name. You welcome this child that was lost. You paid the price for my guilt and my shame. Jesus, I come to the cross. Come to the cross upon Calvary. Gaze on the scene anew. Turn from your sin to the Savior. There Jesus waits for you. Come to the cross seeking mercy and grace. I come to the cross where you died in my place. Out of my weakness and into your strength, humbly I come to thee. Jesus, I come to as I come to the cross. Thank you, Miss Michelle, for that. I trust that you can say that you have come to the cross. There is no greater decision you'll ever make. You're here today. Obviously, you're some part of you that acknowledges that there's a God, or else you wouldn't be here, or maybe you're searching, and there is a God. It'd be a shame for you to go to hell because you acknowledge God in your own way rather than coming to the cross and trusting Jesus as your Savior. It's our desire here, again, not to, to do things the New Hope Baptist way, but the Bible way, and that is to trust Jesus and Jesus alone for salvation. And so if you haven't come to the cross today, we invite you to do that. Yeah, I know it's uh, not invitation time, but it is the thing that God speaks to every person's heart about their need of a Savior. This time, we'll go ahead and dismiss those that are four years old up through the fourth grade. They can be dismissed for Children's Church, four years old up through the fourth grade. Again, appreciate uh, those who are willing to work with our young children. Uh, it's not just babysitting. They are teaching them back there. But they are excited. They're running to the back. If only we can get the adults to run up to the front, we'd be okay. <laughs> We really did have a good time yesterday, and I know that you have things going on and, and maybe didn't work into your schedule and things such as that. And like I said, I gave you some bad information about how long it would be. I thought it was an all-day event, but again, it is just short, one more session after lunch. But a really, really great time that we had yesterday. I think every man enjoyed it. We even had a couple of our men who volunteered to go sing in the, the men's choir there uh, yesterday. What a great time that was. The music was wonderful. The message was great. Even the food was, uh, food was okay, okay? Uh, I'm a picky eater. I'm a picky eater. The guys who eat anything, they loved it. It was great food. Uh, but I'm just a picky eater. Uh, so I know how Brother Lewis felt. We both were sitting in the same boat there. Not so sure about that. But uh, uh, coleslaw is not my cup of tea. All right. I'll, I'll you can pass on that. But it was a really, really good time. They did a great job, the church there, putting on that. I would encourage you this. I know you're busy, but if you have time, men and ladies, uh, if you'd visit Grace Baptist Church on Muncie's website, go to their IFBF uh, men's conference. All the, the services were video recorded, up, up, uploaded, so I'd encourage you to check that out. You will not be disappoint, disappointed. Not like I was, okay? First thing, yeah, I don't know about other pastors were thinking, but I'm sitting there thinking, again, Pastor Wilkerson is pretty well known. He's a good guy, a great man, and uh, I'm thinking, 
I sure hope he doesn't preach on the passage that I'm preaching on today. Okay? I don't know what anybody else is thinking. That's what I was thinking. I mean, of all the hundreds and thousands of, of things you could preach on, I'm thinking, <clears throat> please, don't pick the passage that I'm preaching on. <laughs> he gets up there and he says, turn to the book of James. Oh. <laughs> I, I almost passed out right there in front of everybody. <clears throat> so you've got to be kidding me. But then he said, he said, James chapter 1. I said, okay, I can live with that. I'm not going to be in James chapter 1. And then uh, right before he's finished with the message and encouraging us as to come back to the second and the third sessions, he says, we're going to be looking at the entire book of James and dealing with maturity. And I thought, oh, my goodness. Again, it's not possible, is it? <clears throat> but I also knew that in the back of my mind, at least I was hoping, there's no way he can cover four more chapters in just two sessions. It's just not possible. I mean, surely he can touch on things, but can't get into depth. Sometimes just stay away from chapter four and we'll be okay. And then, uh, uh, but he did touch on chapter four, but not as much as, as that I'm going to this morning. But I want to share this with you. He said he made this statement I thought was very, very interesting. He said, we are information fact and application skinny. Information fact. And application skinny. Now he used that in reference to James chapter 2 that he was uh, dealing some stuff with. But if you'll turn to James chapter 4 this morning, James chapter 4, and, and I want to apply that to a verse that I think makes great sense and we're going to look at today uh, the idea of application, or excuse me, uh, information fat and application skinny. Okay? If you are in James chapter 4 there, look at verse number 17. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Look at the verse again as you're looking there. I know you may know it by heart, but look at it if you would. And the key phrase there says, To him, therefore, to him that knoweth, that knoweth to do good. Uh, th there's the information. Okay? And many of you have been in church uh, many, many years. Okay? You have plenty of information that you have gathered along the way. Uh, Brother John Snyder was telling me this morning before Sunday school, I, I wish I had paid better attention in school, okay? Well, or listen better. That's what he wanted to listen better. Well, I listened just fine in school. The problem is I couldn't retain anything. That was the problem. The listening was okay, but hard to retain. But think about the, the, all the things that you have heard in your life in church. And you know more than what you're willing to admit, okay? So all of us, unless you have only been saved a short amount of time or not in church very often, most of us here today are information fact. But notice what he says there as you continue on. And doeth it not. Okay, so we have all this knowledge. We have all this information. But what? We don't use it. We don't use it. That is application, uh, uh, skinny application, okay? We're application. We don't apply it. Have all this knowledge, and we don't do anything with it. Now, he just mentioned that as with reference to James chapter 2, but I'm looking at it again here, and so we're looking at, I'm using the word instead of, of, of information, understanding. So we have all this understanding, and it's unused. Yeah. Well, notice the last part of the verse. To him, it is sin. To him, it is sin. Now, again, I know you don't want to come here to church and hear about your sin, okay? But the realization is many of us are living with sin. Because we have all this understanding, but we're not using it. And that's by choice. Now, again, I don't know all that James was getting at here in sharing that verse. Maybe he's just using it to talk about verses 13 through, through 17 there. Uh, maybe he's talking about the whole chapter. Maybe he's talking about the whole book. Maybe he's talking about the Bible in general. The doctrines and things that we have learned throughout our entire lives. And then we know them, but yet if we don't do them, it is sin. Now, we don't have time to look at all things, in the, even in the book of James this morning, but I do want to look at some of the things that perhaps James is talking about here when we know these things, but we're not doing them. Look at verses 1 through 3. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lusts that war in your members? Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your own lusts. So what's taking place here in James chapter 4, verses 1 through 3? Who can help me out here? What's taking place? Don't make a deep theological answer because I wouldn't know what it was, okay? What's, taking, what's happening? Conflict. Right, so they're, they're fighting. It's conflict. 
There is arguing and fighting and striving going on. Now, wait a minute here. James says in verse number 17, Therefore him that knoweth to do good. Do good. Do good. Is fighting something good? Not in this aspect. No, it's not good. So what should we be doing? Learning to live peaceably with all men. That's what we should be doing. Learning to live peaceably. Romans chapter 12, verse 18. If it be possible as much as life, then you live peaceably with all men. You say, well, you don't understand the people I live with. Well, yeah, that may be, okay? That may be. But you know what? You don't know who they live with either, all right? So it, it goes both ways there. Ephesians 4, verse 3 says, Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Now, again, no matter whether James is talking about your own home family life, whether he's talking about the brethren in the churches who are, who are constantly fighting. Why? Why does that take place? Well, it's because, again, you know what? We've got to have our way. That's why. We've got to have our way. We won't surrender our will to somebody else's will. I'm telling you right now, I'm right, and I know it. We heard about that in Sunday school today. Brother Joe was telling about how right he was, only to find out how wrong he was. So, but uh, that's the way we are, aren't we? We make up our minds that, hey, I am right and you are wrong. Notice what it says here again, verse number one. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lust that war in your members. Look, I'm telling you, you've got to have your way or else. And that's a problem. Now, whether, again, whether it's husband and wife, siblings, or people here in church. We fight and we bicker and we strive. There's conflict because, you know what? I gotta have my way. It talks about your lust, your desires. I gotta have it my way or else. Well, again, James says it's a sin for us to know to do good. And to do good is what? To live peaceably with men. Is it possible to live peaceably with one another? Nobody says anything. Okay, thank you, Brother Don. You, know, you gotta take Don with you everywhere you go. Okay? You, you, you just do, okay? Now, I don't know how many men were there yesterday. Again, we're talking about teenage guys all the way up uh, to men. But there's a, there a lot of men there, a lot of first-time uh, men that are there. And you expect that many men together, I'd hear a whole lot of amen and going on. You know how much I heard? Brother Don, thank you. Brother Don, thank you. <laughs> you can take him anywhere, okay? He's the amen section, all right? And so after a while, one or two other guys caught on. But it was Brother, it was brother Don, so I'm thankful for that. Uh, he helps out a lot in church that way to get us going. We all should be saying, amen. amen. We can live peaceably with one another. But you know what? You just got to come a point in time where you say, you know what? It's not about having it my way. Right. Now, I'm not talking about compromising on something that's a doctrinal issue. I'm not talking about that. We're just talking about everyday normal life that we go through, and we bicker with one another because, you know what? I'm right, and you're wrong. Yeah. You're right. You have to see it my way or else. How much trouble can we avoid if we would this? you know what? This ain't worth fighting over. Okay, I, I can let that go. Surrendering my will. But notice verse number three, it says this. You ask and receive not because you ask and miss. And here it is again. That you may consume it upon your lusts. Instead of, you know, having it our way, what we should be doing? We should be seeking God's way. That's what we should be doing. How would God handle this matter? Again, we are hearing uh, one of the Sunday, uh, in Sunday school, okay? Uh, uh, I happen to be in Brother Joe's class right now, and he's talking about divine solutions for daily situations, okay? And, and it's a great class, okay? But I guarantee you that Brother John is teaching in here. What's he teaching? God's Word. And that's what we need, folks. Everything we go through, whether, whether it's a problem in life or just a question we don't know, the answer's here. Yeah, it's here. And if both people or multiple people would stop bickering about that things and stop for a moment and say, okay, you know what? Let's truly figure out what it is God wants us to do. But that's usually not what's happening. We always think we know. But if we just stop for a moment, take a breather, look at the scriptures, see what God has to say, we'd all be better off. Because we know what God wants, what's best for us. So we know. Do you not know? Okay, Raise your hand right now if you don't know that you are to live peaceably with somebody. Is there anybody that doesn't know that? All right, okay, so the next time you're fighting with your spouse, remember this, you're living in sin, okay? Because you chose what you knew, but not to use it. Information fat, 
application scanning. Wow. Look at another thing we see here. Verse number four. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is the enmity with God? Whoso therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Now again, boy, James uses some pretty harsh words here, okay? Adulterers and adulteresses. That's somebody, what, that cheats on somebody, yes? We all, we all know that, okay? We're well aware of that. Well, again, he's talking about this in, in essence with what? With God. That the people would cheat on God. You say, I would never do that. Oh, really? But we have, folks. We have. So we know that we ought to what? Love the Lord. We know that, right? It's the first commandment. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. Okay? We know that, right? Who doesn't know the first commandment? Okay, so you're all admitting again that you know that we ought to love the Lord. Okay? But again, he's talking about here uh, the aspect, again, that the, uh, uh, James is writing here. They aren't doing that. When you take that love that's supposed to be for God and you put it toward the world or anything but God, that is sin. Could you imagine being married and what you're doing and all you're doing is you're talking about somebody else? Do you think that would go over very well in your marriage? No, nah, I don't think so either. I don't think so at all. How often do we hear about people like that uh, that work? They're, they're fighting at home or whatever. They go to work, and you know what? They're saying all these nice things to this other person at work. And, you know, if they use that same kind of tone and attitude with their, home, their family at home, they would have that same kind of love, but they don't. Right. They're mad. They're angry at home. They leave, and they share with somebody else. Pour out their heart to somebody else. That love that they should be giving to the people at home, they're giving to somebody outside the home. Now, again, take you will, your Bibles and turn back to Ephesians chapter 5 for just a moment. Ephesians chapter 5. This love of God, again, it, it, it needs to be first toward God and not other people. Mark 12, 30, again, says that we are loved, Lord, thy God, with all our heart, with all our soul, with all thy mind. But look at Ephesians chapter 5. And again, this is often read at a couple's things when we're talking about family, talking about issues with husbands and wives. It's, it's, it's pretty common if you've been in church any length of time. But, but I want you to look at it this morning as an aspect, again, as, G, as James is writing, and he says, you adulterers and adulteresses. Notice it says here, verse 22, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church, and he's the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth it and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined to his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. God makes it a point here, as Paul's writing in the book of Ephesians here, to, to what? Compare... A husband and wife relationship with what? The church and Jesus Christ. The church and Jesus Christ. And God takes marriage very serious. So for, for, for spouses to cheat on one another, you know, that's a sin. God doesn't look favorably upon that. Well, the same is true when it comes to our relationship with God. Who, what, what in the world are we putting our love into in the world and not into God? Now, it could be your job. It could be your hobby. It could be some type of sporting event. It could be anything. And all that love that we're pouring into something else other than God, he, Paul says, or James says what? Ye adulterers and adulteresses. That's a pretty, pretty cut to the heart word, isn't it? Is that what we want? Therefore, him that knoweth to do good, we know that we're to love the Lord our God above all else. But if we're not doing it, it's sin. Amen. It's sin. Yeah. And remember this again, because I, I remind myself this all the time, okay? I mean, if you really think about, hard about 
what it is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. It almost seems like an impossible task, does it not? But because it is a command of God, then it's not impossible. Okay? It is something that we need to constantly be working on, but it's not impossible. Or else God wouldn't command us to do that. Okay? But God ought to be our passion. God ought to be the, the person that we love and not the world. Again, then look at verses 7 through 10. And again, it says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Verse number 10 says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Okay, therefore him that knoweth to do good. So what we're talking about here as far as I'm looking, as I'm applying it, is our relationship to God, okay? Our personal relationship to God. Your personal relationship to God. Do you have a personal relationship with God? That's the number one question you have to ask yourself. Do you have a personal relationship with God? That comes again by calling upon Christ to save you. That's where the relationship begins. But it's more than salvation. We as believers ought to understand that. Therefore, him to know what to do good. So is my relationship only about salvation, or is it about my daily walk with the Lord? Amen. Absolutely, our daily walk with God. Notice it says here in verse number 7, submit yourselves. Are you willing to yield your ways unto the way of God? Now, again, let's just be honest. Most of us struggle with that, don't we? I know better. I know what I'm doing. Submit yourselves, therefore, unto God. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, verses that we quote very well. Sometimes we quote verses without stopping to think about what they truly say. What does Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 say? Trust in the Lord. Who? The Lord. Not you. But him, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Again, you know what? You're never going to do that. I'm never going to do that if we just have a surface relationship with Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Look, God didn't save you, and God hasn't walked with you just so you have a surface relationship. Amen. He loves you beyond what anybody else can even think about doing. Do you understand that? I mean, I don't know if we have any newlyweds in here or anything like that, but, but you think right now that you can't, nobody loves you the way I love you. Well, that's not true, though. Because God loves you far more than anybody else can. Amen. And we short ourselves, or we short our relationship when we don't understand that. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. Again, we have difficulty with that, don't we? Remember, do you know what's going to happen tomorrow? Nope, I don't either. You don't even know what's going to happen this afternoon. But God does. Amen. Amen. Well, if God knows everything, then who would you rather trust in? You, who don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or the next second, but God who knows it all. It's, again, it seems pretty simple to us. But in all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Amen. Submit ourselves. Verse number eight says, draw near or draw nigh to God. You know, it's, it's important, I think, for us, you know what, if we want the best from God, is we need to take the first step. Brother Joe was mentioning some things this morning in Sunday school about, uh, again, about stress, okay? And, and he made a comment, it wasn't the exact words, but pretty close to this very same principle. If we want to relieve stress, then you know what? We need to take the first step, and that is what? Look to God. Look to God. Call upon God. He is there. He will help. Why is it again, you know what? We wait for God to make the first step. Why? When God very clearly tells us here, look, if you will draw near to him, he will draw near to you. You want a better relationship with God? Well, you need to say so. You need to do something about it. We know all these scriptures, but you know what? We're not applying them. That's sin. I'm telling you, if, we don't, if all we have is a surface relationship to God, I, I, I believe we're living in sin. Jeremiah 33, 3, and you can use a host of other verses, but Jeremiah 33 says, what? Call unto me, and what? I will answer thee. What is God doing? Look, you take the initiative. You make the first step, and I'll take care of the rest. Okay? You ask, and I'll answer. You know, God could answer without you asking. He already knows. But what? We're to ask. We're to ask. Why do we not ask? Verse 10 talks about being humble in the eyes of God. Again, we can pretend to be humble all we want, but here it's very clear that James says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. 
God who knows our hearts, whether or not they're truly humble. Psalm chapter 10, verse 12 says, Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up thine hand, forget not the humble. Verse 17 says, Lord, thou hast heard the desire of the humble. The humble. Again, let's just be honest. We live in a society today where humility is not at the top of the chart. Okay? Oh, we can pretend humility all we want with one another. But you can't fool God, and I can't fool God. The psalmist said, search me, O God, and know my heart. Does God look at us and know that we are humble? What is it we read in, in I think it's, uh, is it 2 Samuel, I think it is, in 7, verse 14, if my people which are called my name shall humble themselves. Humble themselves. Again, what are we to do? We're talking about here in verse 7, therefore him that knoweth to do good. So is it good to humble ourselves? Amen. Yes. Now how many of us are doing it? If we're not... We're choosing to sin. Therefore, him to know what to do good, do it not. To him, it is sin. We need to hurry along here. Look at verse number 11. And I'll just mention this briefly, but verse number 11 says, Speak not evil of one another. Speak not evil of one another. Look, we've got to speak words that are what? Profitable to each other. Words that what? Words that edify and words that encourage. Words that edify and words that encourage. Again, Brother Joe mentioned that. And I know he had no idea what I was speaking on this morning, but it's just interesting again how God sometimes just puts things together. Just works it out that way. But talking about stress, one of the things that when people are stressed, you know what? They just need a word of encouragement. Do you know what? You, many folks just come to church because they want something, not to give anything. Okay? I'm not talking about money, by the way, okay? Some people just need a word of encouragement. And when you're here, you could do that, but you don't say anything. I'm just going to sit here. I'm not going to say anything, or I'm just going to talk to my friends only. Well, there's somebody else who can need some encouragement. And you might be that, that person that God uses to give them encouragement. First uh, Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11 says, Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another. Ephesians 4, 29, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying. So we need to edify, build one another up. We're good at tearing people down. Okay? That, that comes natural, that comes easy. Okay? Why? Because when we're tearing people down, it's making us look good. They don't measure up to my standard. We don't need that. Amen. Okay? What we need is words that are profitable, words that edify, words that encourage. But let's look at the, the last few verses here again. And this may just be what James is talking about. I don't know that 100%, but I have a tendency to believe that we can apply it to the entire Bible, the things that we know from God's Word that we ought to be applying. Okay? But let's just talk, read verses 13 and on. It says, go to now. You either say today or tomorrow you will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Look, we ought to seek God about our future plans. Okay? We just assume that we have tomorrow. I wonder how many people, many of us lay our head down at night and think this might be our last night here upon the earth. Probably nobody thinks that. Probably. Okay? Probably. Now again, I also know too, the older we get, the more we come to realize how short life is. I think Brother Wilkerson even mentioned that yesterday. Uh, how many of you uh, know that uh, the majority of your life is already behind you? Okay? And a lot of people raise their hand. But that's just true. Okay? That's just true. If you're over 35 years of age, odds are the majority of your life's behind you. Amen. That covers a lot of people. A lot of people. Look, we need to realize we are not in control. When it talks there again about verses 13 and 14, about you're going to do this, you're going to do that, you don't know what tomorrow holds. Now, again, it's not against uh, you planning for the future. It's not about that. But I'll tell you, we, just, we do things because this is what we're going to do. You're not in control. That's hard to imagine, isn't it, that we're not in control, that somebody else is in control of our lives? We don't like that, do we? Could you imagine? Think, well, think about it this way. Here you are teaching your teenager how to drive. Okay? You're pretty comfortable if you're the one sitting behind the, the driver's seat and the steering wheel in your hands. You're pretty comfortable with that, aren't you? 
But all of a sudden, you change seat with your teenage child, and they're in the driver's seat, and all of a sudden, what? <laughs> Watch out for the... Oh! Amen. You have no hair left? Amen. Broken instruments in the... You have a hole in the floor trying to hit the brake? I mean... That's sometimes that's the, way we, that's the way it is when it comes to God. We, we know God knows better. And we know that God can drive anything, but we have a hard time letting him sit in the driver's seat. Yeah. That's right. Amen. But we're not in control, folks. We're not in control. But also it says in verse number 15 there, for that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. Look, you know, if we'll follow God's commands... If God says, I want you to do this, or I want you to do that, you know what? It's best and easiest if we just say, okay, God, whatever you want, that's what I want to do. I want my future plans to be according to your will. I want to be obedient to all that you ask us to do and command us to do. I want to do those things. Look, we all know that. Everybody would answer yes. But again, therefore him to know to do good. That part's pretty simple for the most part for us. We, we kind of understand that aspect. We understand many of the things that God is teaching us. But then it says, and do with it not. And do with it not. Well, folks, you know what? That's a lot of us. We're not doing that. Oh, it may not be that aspect when it comes to salvation. The will of God, again, for you and I is to trust Jesus Christ as Savior. You know what? If you don't do that... It's sin. You know what? And sin has no place in heaven. So you're only left with the lake of fire for all eternity. You need to come to Christ. Amen. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. Look, in reality, most of us have the understanding, and most of us, uh, most of us it, is, it is unused. And the result of that is what? Sin. It's sin. So my question is, what will we do with our understanding? What will you do with your understanding? Will you continue to be information fat and application skinny? All the knowledge, but it's unused. Just remember, if that's our choice, that is sin. Why don't we go to stand? Have a word of prayer this morning. Again, appreciate you being here. And I know that sometimes preaching on sin is not very popular. You hear a lot of TV preachers say, I just don't preach on those things. Well, I'm just preaching what God's word says there. God doesn't want us to live in sin. God doesn't want us to choose sin. And we don't have to. We know what is good. Now we just need to apply it. Okay? With heads bowed and eyes closed and looking around, let me just simply ask you this. I know you may know God. But the question is, does God know you? Has there been a time in your life where you realize that, hey, I'm a sinner and I need to be saved, and I realize the only person that can save me is Jesus Christ? I'm not asking you if you believe in God, because many of you, obviously, that is the case. I believe in God. But do you realize that you were a sinner that needed to be saved? You say, you know what, Pastor, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I die today that I'm saved. I'm not sure I'd go to heaven. Would you please pray for me? Anybody like that at all? Just slip up your hand. I'd be glad to pray for you. Again, remember, I'm not calling you out by name. But if God's speaking to your heart about your need of salvation, now's the time. Behold, now's the accepted time. Behold, now's the day of salvation. Anybody like that at all before we pray? All right. What about us as believers? Again, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand because the reality is we all should raise our hands because we have a lot of understanding. We have a lot of information, but we certainly don't use it most of the time. And you know what, Pastor? We just need to, we need to get back to being doers of the word and not hearers only. Again, if God's spoken to your heart about that, then you do business with God during the time of invitation. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, again, we do thank you so much for loving us. Thank you again for the truths that we find in your word. And every truth is for our good. And Lord, we need to be faced with our own sin at times. And again, the sin is not something that happens by accident, Lord. It's something that we choose to do. Thank you again for the, the much knowledge that you give us to serve you. But Lord, help us again to be doers of the word and not hearers only. And Father, again, during the invitation, I pray that you just work in hearts and minds in the way that you see fit. We do ask again, though, even though nobody raised their hand about salvation, Lord, you know the heart of each person. Help them to come to know Christ today. 
with heads bowed and eyes closed, the penis is playing through. If God's spoken to your heart about something, the altar's open at this time. As people are singing or as people are praying, the hymn is Have Thine Own Way, Lord, have thine own way. You admit that you have understanding. Are you willing to admit that you aren't letting God have his own way? I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. That's a sin. We certainly want to have a right relationship with God, not only for all eternity, but for each and every day of the week there's sin in your life and God spoke to your heart you don't have to come forward but I'm telling you you need to respond to God right where you are Father again we just ask you to continue to work in hearts and lives throughout the rest of the day bring us back tonight again Lord to we can uh, worship you Lord we can be an encouragement and help to others we ask in Jesus name amen is there a choir practice tonight Brother Joe? four o'clock